In this video, I'll be performing a leak test under the service menu to identify which side my leak is on, my inspiratory side or expiratory side. When performing a device check and my system leak test fails, uh, the three reasons are one is my test tube resistance and compliance is too high. And this is highly unlikely if you're using the uh, tubing that was sent with the ventilator. You might have this if you're using another piece of tubing. Or your pressure did not reach 60, or your pressure is dropping due to the leak. From my experience, a high percentage of the leakage has been from the expiratory side. So many that I have an exter exhalation valve assembly that I just use for troubleshooting to easily pop in and pop out to verify the leaks on the, my expiratory side. Now let's just say that you performed the two-year PM and you changed out the components on the inspiratory side or you do not know where the leak is. So you want to perform the system leak check to isolate which side the leak's on. To perform the leak check, I want to reference my service manual and it's under the chapter for operation verification procedure. And there's a step-by-step -step guide. For the test, I want to at least be hooked up to air and I'll need my 18 inch piece of tubing connected to both my inspiratory and expiratory side. Then next I want to access my service menu. To access the service menu, the ventilator needs to be off. And before powering on, you need to press the encoder knob in and push the power button at the same time. After the ventilator powers on, you can release the power button. However, keep the encoder button pushed in. Be patient, even though the machine powers on, you still need to press in on the encoder knob until you get to the service menu. Once in the service menu, you can take your finger off the encoder knob. First, I'd like to highlight a few things on the home screen of the service menu. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be utilizing my PSOL control buttons. These are the second uh, row of my squares. My top row of squares are my institutional configuration settings. And below my PSOL configuration buttons is my monitoring area. And I wanna look at a few couple measured values. One is my airflow and then my P1, my P2 values. The first step is to select the air PSOL button. I then want to use my encoder knob and I want to adjust this to create a flow of three liters per minute plus or minus one. So on the vent, it doesn't take really much voltage and I'm going to turn it up to approximately 0 0.7 or 75 and let's see what value that gives us for a measured airflow. This generated airflow of 3.1, so I'm going to keep my setting here. Second, I want to select the exhalation PSOL number one button. And using the rotary knob again, the encoder knob, I want to adjust it to 2.5 volts. This will totally occlude my expiratory side. With my expiratory side occluded, this should build up pressure of my P1 and P2 values. Notice both of them are zero, so I have a huge leak. I need to find out which side my leak's on. I'm going to first check my inspiratory side, so I'm going to isolate my inspiratory side. I'm going to use a rubber stopper. This comes in the calibration kit, or you can order it. Or if you don't have the rubber stopper, you could just use your thumb to occlude it. I do not want to occlude the inspiratory side yet. I want to turn on my air flow first. Um, let me also get my phone. I'm going to put on a timer so we know that if it passes the leak test. So I'm just going to bring up my timer. I've got to find my timer here real quick. Sorry. And we'll bring up my stopwatch. There, stopwatch is ready to go. So I first select my air piece saw 
and you won't see the airflow change until I confirm this setting. So as before, it's approximately around 0 0.75 or maybe just a little lower depending on the ventilator. And I do this to create a airflow of three liters per minute. Now I see the measured airflow is three liters per minute. And now I can use the plug or my thumb to include the, the inspiratory side. And I want to keep it included because I want to create a seal and I want to create a leak. So I'm looking at my P1 value. I only have pressure on P1. That's my inspiratory side. And it's 120. So it's way over. So now what I want to do is I want to turn down my air flow, turn it all the way off while it's occluded. And let's see if it holds this pressure here. And I want it to hold above 90 centimeters of water for 10 seconds. So I'm going to start my stopwatch and let's see if it holds. So the pressure is dropping. I look at my P1 value. It's still above 90. And even after 10 seconds, um, my um, pressure is holding. It's above 90 centimeters of water. So my inspiratory side's nice and tight. I had a dirty pop-up valve, which I cleaned off. Let's see if that created a leak. So I'm going to do the test again. Now, this is both my inspiratory and expiratory side, my whole system. So I'm going to just turn my airflow up again to 0.75 voltage. And this will create a airflow of approximately 3 liters per minute. And now, since I'm checking both sides, inspiratory and expiratory, I'm turning my exhalation piece all number one and I'm turning this all the way off so 2.5 volts and let's go ahead and see what kind of pressure this creates so my pressure is building up and both my pressures my p1 and my p2 values are over 100 and they're holding so now what I want to do is I'm going to turn off my airflow and let's see if it holds over 10 seconds so start the timer you notice the timer on the right hand side of the screen and both my P1 and my two P2 values have remained over 90 for 10 seconds. So now my inspiratory and expiratory side are tight, so it passed the leak test.